I am going to explain this step by step, and then I'll do another one much quicker. Um, but if you guys have any questions on this, please let me know. This is a basic review from Algebra 1, but we are going to focus today just on substitution, as well as your homework just on substitution today. And then we'll get into elimination and, and so forth. Um, so basically, ladies and gentlemen, when we're solving a system of equations, we could obviously graph these two and determine where their intersection point is, right? But as you guys probably notice in your homework quiz, sometimes graphing them is like not very fun, right? It can be difficult. You could have intercepts that are not fractions, or even the intersection point could not be, could not be whole numbers or integers. They could be fractions as well. So not always graphing is the best. Sometimes graphing though is helpful. It's, you know, some of you, if you know it and you find it, it's easy and it's good to visualize. Because we know when they have an intersection point, that's the solution. However, what we're going to do is do substitution, which is an algebraic technique. And I had you guys write down the process, because as I explain this, I'm just going to follow the process step by step. So the first step is to identify a variable with a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, the coefficient is the number that is multiplied by your variable. So you guys can see, as I just entered in a 1, because if there's no number there, we can understand that 1 could be 1 is in its place. So therefore, we can see that the variable x is the only variable that has a 1 or negative 1, right? If you have multiple variables with coefficients of 1 or negative 1, just pick one, OK? Um, and again, this doesn't, you don't have to use a variable, but I'll explain why. Step 2 is to solve for that variable using inverse operations. So I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to solve it over here. Now, why am I choosing the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1 rather than any other variable? Well, the reason why, ladies and gentlemen, is because of inverse operations. When I solve for x, all I have to do is subtract a 6y on both sides, right? Because what if I was going to solve for x here? To solve for x in this equation, I would have to subtract 4y on both sides. Then I would have to divide by 5, which is going to create fractions, which who wants to do a problem with more fractions unless you have to, right? So I always like to choose the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. Step number 3, plug the quantity, plug in quantity, plug in the quantity that the variable is equal to. I should include that. That didn't make sense last class period. Plug in the quantity that the variable is equal to into the other equation. So what does it mean that the quantity of the variable is equal to? Well, what this variable is equal to is what we call the quantity. Now, actually, I'm going to use some different lettering so you guys can visualize this. Okay, So I'm going to plug in what x is equal to in for the same variable, which is x, of the other equation. So that means x is equal to this. I'm going to plug this quantity in for x in this equation. So it looks something like this. 5 times negative 6y plus 2 plus 4y equals 36. Can everybody visualize what I just did? I found the quantity of x in one equation. I took that quantity and replaced x in the other equation with that quantity. Does everybody follow me? This is usually the hard part of substitution. So now, um, the next step is to simplify and solve for the other variable. Up until this point, we were always dealing with x. Now, by substituting in the quantity of what x was equal to, I now have an equation of only y. So now, I need to apply distributive property and solve for y. So therefore, this becomes a negative 30y plus 10 plus 4y equals 36. Another very, very important um, mistake students make. I have two variables on the same side. When they're on the same side, ladies and gentlemen, you can just combine them. You don't need to do properties of equality. Over here, um, uh, well, it doesn't make sense here. Uh, well, over here, I had to subtract 6y on both sides. Here, though, they're on the same side, so you just combine them. So I have a negative 30y plus 4y is going to be a negative 26y plus 10 equals 36. Now I go ahead and subtract a 10 on both sides. So I have a negative 26y equals 26. Divide by negative 26, divide by 26, or negative 26, y equals negative 1. So everybody follow? Just algebra from there. 
So once you plug it in, which is the hard part, you've got to solve a two-step equation, which you have a quiz on next class period, so make sure you can solve equations. Um, then you plug in the value back into the equation for the same variable. So now I know y is equal to negative 1. I'm going to plug it back into one of the original equations. I prefer to plug it into the equation that I have solved for x, because I know what y is. The only thing I don't know is what x equals. So I can say x equals negative 6. Instead of times y, what is y equal to? Negative 1 plus 2. Negative 6 times 6 is positive 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. So now, my, remember, the solution is the x and the y coordinate, right? For a solution of a system of two equations, you've got to have two variables. So I have at coordinate point 8, negative 1. If they ask you to write it as a coordinate point, you just do x comma y. And that is it.